Yo guys and welcome to another top 5 list. This is gonna be the top 5 worst Twitch chat advices that I have had once I started Dota 2. Now to be fair, Twitch chat is not a single multi-celled, multi-brain-celled organism that is just really mercurial. There's lots of different people, so there's gonna be different advices. Some of them good, some of them bad. For instance, when I started my A to Z, where I said I want to try every Dota 2 hero once, many people told me, don't do it. And I'm like, why not? I want to do it. And they were like, don't do it. You can't do this. Stop right now. You have to either do the all hero challenge where you get credit from Gabe, from Valve, you get points. But as I said, A to Z, I can just play an all hero challenge. You need to win with a hero to move on. And then we might still be playing Kunkar for months. Don't do it, do only the hero challenge, okay? Then the other one was, uh, don't do it because you should focus on just a handful of heroes, three to five, that's it, and nothing else, just three to five heroes in order to learn the game better. And I'm like, why? Maybe I don't wanna learn the game better yet. Maybe I wanna play every hero once. No, 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 you have to play just three to five to get the game better. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I'll do that later. But first, A to Z, and it was a lot of fun. We just finished the journey of A to Z and it was fun. So that gave me a bit of a taste for some people, not everyone, just some people in the Dota 2 community with the backseat uh, advice. And you know, sometimes backseat advice is good. For instance, literally, when you're in the back of a car and someone is driving 200 miles on the freeway, backseat advice would be, take it easy, chill, brother. Uh, so it's 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 not to be uh, disagreeable, but they think it's gonna be good for you. And I agree, playing a, a smaller handful of heroes is, is good for your win rate. You will climb more MMR, you'll learn aspects of the game better and you'll gain comfort. I agree with that, which is why it was so ironic that when I did start to do that recently, I've been playing a lot more of uh, Klinks, uh, Tidehunter uh, and some others, but mostly these two a lot, that when I do that, I get the advice to branch out or I won't know enough other heroes. Stop playing the same hero over and over. At the end of the day, there's so many people watching that you're gonna get contradictory advice all the time. There's gonna be good ones and bad ones. And sometimes there could be good advice that just doesn't fit your plan right now. So no, uh, I'm not knocking on Twitch chat or any particular member at all, but this is mostly Twitch chat advices that didn't work out well when I got it. And number one is don't take lane farm at all when you're playing support. When I was really new to Dota 2 and I was playing uh, support positions, I used my intuition of Heroes of the Storm, the other MOBA that I played, in order to make sure that unattended lane farm should still be addressed in order to prevent our tower from being pushed in by masses of ranged creeps and towers, to make sure that their tower is pushed in, to make sure that we don't need to belatedly reply and defend our lane when we can ill afford the spread attention. For example, we're fighting for Roshan and now our bottom tower is dying to creeps or even a, a hero push, a nature's prophet ratting it or something, right? Um, so I wanna deal with lane imbalances early and I wanna create imbalances towards the opponent. Furthermore, it's it's nice XP and gold, even for a support. <laughs> Can get better support items or do a little bit of extra damage. Uh, and if I see that my lane allies aren't doing it, uh, core positions, position one, two or three, I may feel like doing it as a support. Of course, this is provided that every other aspect of the support role has been fulfilled capably. You have warded and dewarded. You have made sure that your core is very likely farming in a safe location and they do not need your cu current active chaperoning. Or you have vision on the opponent and you know where they are and they're not currently doing an incursion into your jungle. In this case, it is absolutely fine as a position four or five to take some lane farm, to hold the fort literally and figuratively and get a little bit more uh, gold and XP as well. In fact, at the pro play, uh, support positions often take mid lane farm for a bit. When you are level four at the nine minute mark, get a little bit of mid lane farm, get level five as the mid laner goes to take a power rune and uh, at rounds on the top lane or the bottom lane to do a gank on one of the opponents. So it is actually baked into the game. 
And we also know that uh, into the game style, we also know someone like Puppy is like sometimes mentioned as being a, a fake support, uh, a fake position five, because he tends to kind of draw more greedy lane farm as well. Most of all, I'm not particularly saying that you should do it, but I got a lot of blanket statements that you should never do it. And that felt weird to me. And it kind of cramped my style as well, because sometimes cores should be doing side lane pressure, but they don't because they're scared or unaware. Uh, and then maybe you can do it sometimes. And in a sense, a support is a more acceptable sacrifice if the opponent does choose to send three people to go and gank you in that far down bottom lane uh, after you've pushed down about three waves. So yeah, uh, it, I, I would say you don't necessarily always have to do it, but I don't think you should use don't take lane farm at all as a support, which I got I got that advice a lot. Like, it's more like a demand. Number two, I was playing a game on Medusa and it was kind of a knuckle duster. It was kind of a slugfest. I was fully specced and I kept, in this time, I think right now I'm Archon 4 and I have about 400 games, but when I had about 200 games about 100 games of ranked i got anxious a lot about items i didn't know most of the items as intimately as i should like and therefore i felt a lot of uncertainty and anxiety about all the item recipes and which item might be better and worse look in a the chat there'd often be a million different advices uh, all in direct contradiction of one another but I had one fully slotted Medusa game where it seemed that everyone suddenly agreed on the correct path forward, which was buy Divine Rapier right now on Medusa and sell your power threads. So I looked over at chat, I saw the same advice from everybody and I thought it must be true then, it must be true. Now Medusa Manta's gift copy of course does not copy uh, white damage, it only copies green damage which is based on agility which is why Butterfly and Skadi do more for, for Manta's copies uh, than something like Rapier but still Rapier is gonna hit hard with split shot and maybe it was correct, we'll never know it just so happened that the secret shop next to me, the nearest one to me uh, was the enemy secret shop and looking in the replay later I realized that I was in full observer ward vision Additionally, none of my team members were with me to chaperone me. So you could argue That I walked into enemy vision and invited a five-man a five-man uh, crit jack on me uh, gang up Someone said sell travels and buy rapier. I don't know what the hell is going on there. I did it, and now we're, we lost. And they were nice enough to wait until I assembled all the pieces of the Divine Rapier. <laughs> so I bought the Rapier, I sold the treads, and I instantly died to a five-man collapse. And they took my Rapier, and we lost. Was it Twitch chat's fault? Maybe not. But it worked out in the worst possible way. And I have low temptation resistance to crazy ideas like that. So... And there were so many people saying the same thing. Uh, maybe it was correct. Uh, number three. I started with Ancient Apparition in the A to Z. And I played him several times shortly after to try him out more. He seemed like a cool hero. His name is Kaldir and he's like... Um, he's like the puppet master of the universe or something. We should watch some Lorgasm video about him sometime. But I like him. And... Uh, but I lost everything. I was 0-4. So then I got to a day where I said, I'll randomize my hero and it gave me Kaldir, Ancient Apparition. I thought, okay, that's fated. Let's try to start winning with him. Watched a couple of replays, started winning. Won like three, four, five support games in a row. And we were suffering from success. So I took an advice from chat. People were like saying, play him mid, play him in mid, AA mid. And I play roll queue, right? Roll ranked queue. So I queued up as position mid. And uh, the advice for for him was the the advice the supporting evidence for him to be played mid was Dendi did it too. I thought, well, if Dendi did it, it must be good. Uh, surely I could do it too, Kappa. And so I did it, and I think it was one of my first deserved reports. My behavior score dropped from 10k to 9.9 something. Uh, <laughs> it was not good. Uh, we lost. I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. Uh, go next point. Uh, number four of uh, top five worst Twitch chat advice. 
don't experiment away from the meta any meta even old meta now what meta is is what was played at ti just now and whatever is going to be played at the next major but there's many different metas as well living inside the heads of various twitch chatters you know you see many twitch chatters have played a lot of dota 2 and sometimes they've been playing non-stop for the last three years others may have played for three years straight but five years ago and maybe some people played for 10 years but haven't played for two years already something like that so sometimes their understanding of the meta may be based on something that ended two years ago some of them never even used agonim shard or scepter and still remember certain tricks that used to work they may recommend me to go fountain hook or something with <laughs> with budge uh, so recently i try to deviate away from some of my mainstay hero picks and I tried an, a hero I haven't played a whole lot, Lina. I just played her once. And I wanted to be responsible, so I first tried it out in unranked rather than ranked, so as to not grief myself and my allies. Additionally, I did my homework. I went to Dota 2 Pro Tracker, searched up Lina, and I looked at people with 9,000 MMR. That's a lot, by the way. That's, um, let's see, how high percentile is that? Someone just sent me a link. The Dota seasonal rank distribution. If you are if you are immortal, you are the top 0.1%. If you're divine five, you're the top two percent. So 9,000 MMR is not just 0.1%. It's it's better than 0.1, I believe. I think it's among the whole player base. So either way, it's it's very very good. So I found a whole bunch of 9,000 MMR players uh, and some players that did it repeatedly. They played Lina in position one with Maelstrom as a weapon, as an item, right? But when I shared my plans with Twitch chat, everyone, so many people started saying, like dozens, dozens of people, that I can't do it. Well, first of all, literally, I can, right? <laughs> I can. No, 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 you can't do this. You must not do this. You will get reported. It's, it's bad. Why Maelstrom? It doesn't make sense. I'm like, I don't know if it makes sense. We're gonna find out, but at least I've got the precedent of high-level players doing it. Here, let me show you the data. And Twitch chat blew up. I've never seen something so antagonistic uh, and so backseaty as don't do this thing that you're about to do. Even though I was gonna do it in unranked. So, yeah. Uh, sometimes I learned you just have to ignore certain chatters. Maybe subscribe remote or maybe just ignore or time out because it was wild you wouldn't believe it it was wild it was like it was like i was dropping a baby from a building like no don't do this thing don't do this thing when i'm just trying something that had supporting evidence in unranked number five worst twitch chat advice was stop playing heroes you win a lot with they won't work later on Klinks is my favorite hero right now and we're doing quite well with him but he was not picked in ti at all weird weird he's so good i feel like they should pick him like he's probably a lot better than what the pros think i think i know something the pros don't know what do you think anyway the point is there are different ways to play the game you can play the meta of the pros in aspiration of becoming a pro or you can play what works for you now and then adapt once you're forced to if your 100 percent win rate on terror blade position 5 20 games in a row would you stop because it's fake because it doesn't work because it's griefing you have been the reason that you and your team have been winning now i ain't saying go terrorblade position five this is hypothetical deeply theoretical and hypothetical i'm just saying if you're finding something that works repeatedly is there a reason to stop it now because it won't work forever hell no i started driving on a bicycle with a third with with side wheels right it worked then we didn't say let's immediately get on a motorbike you toddler <laughs> the toddler's always on tricycles it's not gonna work when you grow up here i'll put you on a plane fly <laughs> no i think you need to learn step by step and clinks works a lot for me right now and once it doesn't anymore i'll analyze why and i'll either update my style or learn new heroes and uh you know some sometimes people wanted me to stop playing heroes they see a lot probably for stream uh, entertainment they want to see something else also understandable and uh, i'm not a pro gamer at the moment i mean 
Dep depending on what definition, I'm not an active tournament player right now, but I'm still a try-hard casual, so if something is working now, it's gonna be hard to convince me to go play something else just for the lulls of it. And uh, when I deviate to another hero, it may not work as well, and that's not gonna be the end of me, I'm not gonna hit a wall. Uh, I'm not here boosted just by clinks, because when I play support, I also win more than 50%. But uh, I, I can just learn a new hero in unranked of anything. So it's been a very interesting experience so far, learning Dota 2. I've had the benefit of a lot of coaching from coaches, from players, from streamers, and from Twitch chat as well. And 99% of it is positive. But every now and then you can get carried away with some advices that work out in the worst way. Next time we'll do top five best Twitch chat advices. Hope you enjoyed the video, see ya.